Hi, in this video we are going to take a detailed look at how to easily install Arch Linux in 2021. But before we get started, I'd like to talk about a milestone we reached on this channel. So last month we hit the 1000 subs and it's really a milestone for me because one, this is a Linux channel and second, I don't post regularly. And that's because I'm busy with a lot of projects and other stuff. So this channel has about 200,000 views and very few subs, which is understandable because of the nature of this channel. So to all of you who have subscribed, I really appreciate you and I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, this channel is run by you, actually, and most of the videos here are requested or suggested by my viewers, that is you. So from the latest video, this one on the uh, which you are seeing, to the most watched video on the channel, both are viewer requested videos actually. So uh, most of them is pretty much that. And this is how I see the channel uh, uh, for the future uh, and for a long time so your requested or suggested video is will be what I'll be making and the content on this channel is going to increase as there is a lot of pending requests at the moment that I have and I'm also motivated with this milestone achieved but uh, apart from keeping how things are working out right now I'm also give uh, I'm also going to give you something extra and that is these projects that I told you about just now. So I'll be sharing these projects with you. And one of them is this Arch Linux GUI. And this is the tool for you. And this is a project for me. But so this project actually is a tool for you to easily install Arch Linux. So what you have to do is open your web browser and go to sourceforge.net slash project slash arch dash Linux dash GUI. I'll, I'll link this in the description. You don't have to worry about that and you can scroll down and click on the download button. Uh, so this project currently feature, features the KDE Plasma desktop with three editions. So what are the three editions? Uh, ALG means Arch Linux GUI by the way, so I'll be using this abbreviation throughout the video. So ALG Pure, ALG Minimal and ALG Flagship. So uh, there are a bit of audiences in mind. So ALG Pure is as you can say the purest version of the ISO with very little software installed. And then ALG Minimal is just a step above ALG Pure uh, in, with regards to a bit of system settings. So you get dark theme here, but you don't get dark theme here. So that's just one example. You can read more in the README and I'll be making subsequent videos on this channel. So please subscribe if you haven't. And then ALG Flagship is the fully featured uh, ready to use Arch Linux ISO. Uh, so once you click on the green button, that will lead you to download the ALG flagship edition. Uh, and I'll, I think I should be making a separate video on this. So right now I'm going to go ahead with the ALG minimal ISO. So in order to download that, you have to go to files. And over here, you can see we have a bunch of ISOs. Uh, this is the one I want to download, which is the latest ISO, uh, which is 21.04 all right so you have to click on this the installation procedure for all three ISOs are uh, similar I'll be making a video however for all three ISOs and uh, right now we'll be focusing on ALG minimal so once you are on this page uh, this is 1.3 gigs actually so you can just come here and save file if you're on Firefox uh, and if you are on Chrome or Edge, the download will start automatically on the bottom left. I'm going to cancel this because I have it here in my downloads folder already. Here it is. Right. So I have this ISO here. So now what we are going to do is we need a USB device on which we can uh, burn this into to make a bootable USB. So I'm going to insert a SanDisk USB device right now. Okay, and we have it. So there you see, we have a USB device. So if you, I, I'm assuming a lot of you are on Linux. Uh, that's because of the statistics of the download so far. Uh, a lot of the users are, are already on Linux. So you can use uh, Bolina Etcher or some other uh, DD front end. We'll be using the DD command itself. So you can open the terminal. And right now, in my case, I have one hard disk installed on this computer, which is slash dev slash SDA. Uh, so I'll just run an LSBLK to show you what we have. So like I said, this is a one terabyte hard disk and this is SDA and the USB device that I just entered is SDB. So that's 14.6 uh, gig 16 on the packaging basically. So what I want to do is unmount this. So you mount 
slash devs slash sdb and we need to unmount not just the drive but all the partitions on the drive so i'm going to hit star that is going to delete all this uh, this uh, not delete i'm sorry this is going to unmount sdb1 sdb2 sdb3 the sdb is the drive but sdb1 sdb2 and sdb3 are partitions right so we want to unmount the partitions so hit enter and this is going to uh, unmount all the partitions along with the drive now what we want to do is format this with a Linux compatible uh, file system. So type in sudo and then mkfs for make file system. And then in this case, I'll be using ext4 file system. You can use btrfs, riserfs. I mean, that's to explore. But uh, most Linux distributions, including uh, mainline Arch Linux, uh, we usually uh, format with the ext4 partitioning system. So we'll keep things simple in this video. Uh, and the name so uh, mkfs is make file system the file uh, the type of file system we want to create is ext4 and then the drive so which drive we are going to be formatting is sdb right so slash dev slash sdb please note that in this case i have one hard disk which i do not want to touch and i have a usb device uh, the 16 gig one so i have sdb now if you have multiple hard uh, multiple usb drives uh, connected to your computer in fact multiple hard drives com connected to your computer your usb device might uh, seem like sdc or sdd depending on the number of drives you have attached to your computer so in this case one hard disk which i don't want to touch and sdb which i want to format uh, this is going to be of course with sudo like we have entered here so you need to enter your password when you're prompted to and uh, it will say do you want to uh, proceed anyway we want to t type in y for yes hit enter this is going to take some time and once our usb device is formatted we'll be uh, burning the disk image which we have in the downloads folder here this one onto the usb device okay so before we go ahead and uh, make the bootable USB device, uh, I want to take and uh, talk about the release cycle of this project, Arch Linux GUI. Remember the uh, link and I'll also post it in the description. So when you come to files, if you are uh, downloading the mainline version, which is the flagship edition, which comes with, you can you can read the readme, okay? It has all the differences between the three ISOs. All three ISOs contain KDE Plasma at the moment, but Arch Linux GUI, the main one, is the, as you can see, with the downloads. So uh, that is the one with uh, all the software, Office Suite with Microsoft fonts and, you know, browser and this and that dark theme and everything, all the theming. Uh, minimal is the one which we are dealing with and pure is the one and then we have minimal and pure of March as you can distinguish by uh, 21.03 so these are the March ISOs while these three are the April ISOs which you can distinguish by 21.04 so by looking at this I want to tell you that the release cycle is going to be the same as the mainline arch release cycle uh, the website for this is going to come soon right so i'll be uh, i'll be updating you with a video on that as well so right now all you can take note is that on the first of every month you are going to get a new iso which means the next iso release will be on the first of may right so now is april the uh, the first of may you get a new iso uh, with 21.05 so uh, the same day as the mainline Arch Linux release, you get the ALG ISOs as well. So this is about the release cycle. Uh, we are done with formatting the USB device. So uh, what I'm going to do is now uh, burn the USB device to uh, burn the sorry the the disk image to the USB device, right? So what we want to do is this is going to be root again. So we need to type in sudo dd. Uh, dd is the command via which we are going to be doing this if means input file and the name of the file which we want is this arch linux gui so you can just type in arch and tab to autocomplete and then of is uh, of means output file that's uh, we are going to use that to uh, uh, tell which device we want to burn this disk image to so that is slash dev slash sdb remember the file the, the drive you, are, uh, you had formatted over here that's the drive you want to put over here and then we can just click enter but then you don't get a booze output so what you want to do is type in status is equal to progress i'm typing with one hand that's why it's a bit slow but anyways um, we can just go ahead and hit enter and as you can see 
the disk image is going to be copied over to your uh, USB device and that should be bootable now and this is going to take some time so I'm going to leave it uh, and then I'll be back when this is done and then we'll be installing this on real hardware uh, on a UEFI boot mode computer with the GPT partitioning scheme so I'll, I'll be back when this is done. Okay, all right, guys. So as you can see, uh, we have a made the bootable USB, and just to show, give you a little glimpse of how ALG Minimal looks like. This is ALG Minimal itself. Uh, this is what you are going to expect. So let's plug in our USB device and boot up from it. To boot up from your USB device, press one of the function keys shown on the screen which matches with your laptop or desktop's motherboard brand. After entering the boot menu, select your USB device brand. On certain desktops, you may see your USB device twice, once as it is and second with UEFI written in front of it. If you are booting from a UEFI boot mode motherboard, select the UEFI option. In my case, it's UEFI SanDisk. If you are booting in legacy mode, just the USB device brand is what you want to select and in this case it's going to be SanDisk. The installation procedure for both the UEFI option and the legacy option in this video is going to be similar. Alright, so once you decide to boot from your USB device, this is what you boot into whether you're booting from legacy or UEFI BIOS modes and of course this is the ALG minimal ISO. Uh, I've connected to internet and then installed the screen recording software. And then I did a dry run before uh, doing the final recording. So what you want to do is uh, press your meta key or the Windows key basically for simplicity. And then search for install system. And this is what you want to click on. So this is the Calamaris installer which you get in a lot of uh, uh, Arch based distribution. So this is Arch Linux itself. Uh, and I didn't put it on the desktop because I didn't want to make it look a lot uh, Manjaro-ish if that thing exists, but if that word exists, but yeah, if you want me to put the I, uh, the installation icon on the desktop, please do tell me in the comments section, okay? So if you have connected to internet and you have power on this, uh, uh, this uh, installation is offline, but if you want to see this image as well as get your time zone detected automatically, uh, you can connect to internet. Otherwise, you can always do it manually, right? So uh, I've connected to internet. This is a desktop, so I have power already. If you're doing this on a laptop, you want to make sure you have your uh, power cable connected. And then you can select your language in which you want to do the installation. I'll be doing this in English and then click on next. So because I've connected to internet already, uh, this will this has automatically detected my time zone. I'm in India and my time zone is Kolkata. If you are in India, wherever you live in India, your time zone is Kolkata. And uh, your uh, time zone is selected automatically by the installer if you are connected to internet, right? Wherever you are in the world. So you can click on next and with your time zone, your keyboard layout is detected. But sometimes it's wrong, just like in my case. So I'm not using the Devnagari keyboard. I'm using the English United States keyboard. Uh, if you are in UK, you can use the UK keyboard so that you get the point, right? So I'll be using this keyboard and then you can, once you've selected your keyboard, you can click on next. And for simplicity, we are just going to do the manual partitioning so that both users of UEFI boot mode and legacy boot mode can follow along in this video. Of course, this is not something that I do usually in my videos. But just to save time in this particular video, just to show you about the project, uh, I'll be doing this so that both uh, users having the legacy uh, computers and the UEFI computers can uh, follow along. So you can see this is UEFI and here it uh, surprisingly shows MBR. It's not surprising for me because the hard disk on which I'm installing, this is a laptop hard disk, 500 gig hard disk drive. You can see this is a Toshiba uh, 465. It's 500 on the packaging actually. So uh, this was previously partitioned as an MBR system. So the partitions were created according to the MBR scheme. Right now we are going to be using the GPT scheme. So when you, when, because I'm using the automatic installer, I'm, I'm not creating swap, okay? That's for hibernation, so you can do that. Okay, so this is it. Uh, the installer automatically for me is going to be partitioning it uh, according to the GPT partitioning scheme. So this is what you have already and this is what you'll get, okay? So we are not going to overcomplicate things here. Uh, select erase this, click on next and type in your credentials, whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to type in test, type in a very strong and memorable password. And then you have the option to log in automatically, which we don't want. We want the password to be asked. And we also want to, uh, this is up to you. I want to use the same password, this one for the uh, sudo things. So whatever we do with sudo, sudo pacman-s uh, or pacman-r, uh, anything that we do with sudo, 
uh, this is going to be the same password which we used to log in into the computer. Click on next. Uh, this is the summary of what we will get and uh, we can just click on install. So there it is. I'll just fix this thing a bit later on in the May release. And uh, meanwhile, while this is going on, I'll just give you a tour of the minimal ISO. So this is what you get. You get the open terminal thing over here. So you can, or maybe you are in the downloads folder. You can just go ahead and, you know, open the terminal in your downloads folder. So this is the minimal ISO. There is nothing much over here. Uh, you see, not, not a lot of things. You don't even get a web browser, a VLC media player, nothing. All of these are in the flagship ISO. So the reason this ISO exists, this one and the pure ISO is because uh, for users who want just a very easy graphical installer to install Arch Linux and then want to go on the rest of the journey on their own, this is the ISO for you, this one and the pure one. In the pure one, you don't even get these themes and everything. So everything is white. Uh, so look at the terminal. The terminal is transparent, right? You don't even get that in the pure ISO. And look at Kate. So the fonts are increased. Dark theme I already showed you. And you're pretty much on your own uh, for both the pure and minimal ISOs. And uh, for the flagship ISO, you get theming and everything and, you know, additional software, browser and VLC media player, Office Suite with Microsoft fonts. So that's the difference. I'll be making separate videos for all three ISOs uh, once uh, this one is this particular video is released and also a uh, proper installation for both UEFI and so right now we just did we just clicked on the uh, uh, automatic installer but I'll be doing it the traditional way how I do it in my on this channel I'll be manually going through the process of how to create your partitions on your USB device on your hard disk not USB device on your hard disk so this is going to take some time. I'll be back when this is done. All right, so as you can see, we are done with installing Arch Linux. You can go ahead and click on restart now uh, to restart your computer. Uh, I'll be going ahead and copying the uh, file, this one. Uh, so that I can edit it and one more thing with the minimal ISO you get a uh, custom Arch Linux splash screen as well which you don't get in the pure ISO so now just go ahead and restart your system click on done all right so after copying the screen recording I shut down the computer so that I could show you the boot uh, process the next boot process so we'll just power on the machine And there it is, we have Arch Linux Grub, and then we can just hit on enter. And it took me hardly five minutes to install uh, Arch Linux within just a, with, with just a few clicks on a laptop hard disk. So if you are using an SSD, uh, it's going to be way, way faster than this. And for boot up, it takes around 20 seconds, 20, 25 seconds, because this is a laptop hard disk, right? Uh, so on and our desktop hard disk, you can reduce by five seconds maybe. So we'll have SDDM and this is guys how we can easily install Arch Linux uh, with, with, with just a few clicks in a very short amount of time. So type in your password and uh, we will see the uh, splash screen. So this channel is going to be uh, the mode of communication where I'll be telling you about this project and all the updates and of course we were able to do it within five minutes because uh, we didn't partition we did the automatic partitioning right and that is now that is not how i recommend uh, uh, partitioning so i'll be releasing separate video for uefe boot mode legacy boot mode how to partition using mbr or gpt and uh, how to dual boot, multi boot with other operating systems as well. So this is the channel where you'll get all the content regarding uh, ALG. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day and please subscribe because this is where uh, you'll get all the updates regarding this project. Thank you so much for watching.